Right, welcome to this uh, series of Fash Skill, and we are going to learn everything from design to patterns to sewing. And I will also. Um, I received a couple of assign uh, a couple of responses from the previous assignment of the full face mask, and you sent in a couple of photos. And it is great to see your progress. But if you're still struggling with that previous class uh, of making a full face mask, please reach out. Now, when you go to your classroom where there is submission, when you see the, as I've posted there an assignment, you will see a button that says add. So you click that button and attach those photos. Yeah, I've seen there is that option. You can directly attach your completed assignments so i'll be happy to see what you come up with then um this assignment is very important because it will help me evaluate how best you've learned this module tomorrow we shall be learning how to make we shall be learning how to make necklines but emphasis will mostly be put on how to draft those necklines because necklines are very key in making uh, all sorts of garments all right so let us proceed with this lecture the contents tools and materials design patterns and sewing now in the previous lecture we learned uh, all the various tools we need so this time around I am not going to put emphasis on the tools and materials and the design. I'm just, since we learned those, we learned the tools and materials, we learned the design, how it looks like. You can still go ahead uh, on Google and research how to improve this design, how to make it better. Uh, I would love to see uh, what you research, what you come up with. It will be uh, a great opportunity to. Uh, share it with other people to share what you have researched the designs i've taught you right from the first class uh, that is not the end you have to always go ahead and research and uh, you know a prototype and see what you're able to come up with so since last in the last class we learned the tools and materials and the design today we're going to put the emphasis on the patterns and the sewing. The emphasis shall be put on the patterns and the sewing. So to start off with the patterns, you gather all your drafting tools, the rulers, the pencils, the scissor, and the drafting paper. And like I said, the drafting paper, you even if you don't you are unable to access it, you can still use uh, alternatives you can uh, uh, use newsprint or you can use uh, a simple a4 paper since this garment is not very big it can actually fit on an a4 paper or you can actually attach uh, several a4 papers together you will still be able to come up with this pattern it's always recommended that you work you first work on the pattern on the paper because it will help you understand how much material you need. Hence, you'll be saving a lot in case you make a mistake. You can always correct the pattern on paper before you actually transfer it onto the fabric. As opposed to other people who draft directly on the fabric, once you make a mistake, it will be very difficult for you to actually correct it or else you'll be um or else you'll have to cut new fabric so first cutting the pattern onto the paper is help is a good way to help you on saving on the or saving on the fabric so once you've gathered your drafting tools together the next thing is to start on the drafting so you demarcate the perimeter you need so you're going to need a rectangle which is five and a quarter inches by five inches. So you demarcate the space or the perimeter you'll need for this mask 
or for this draft. Uh, this length is five inches and that width is 5.25 inches or five and a quarter inches by five inches. Then the next thing is to mark off these white points as you see them. These white points or those dots will be able to assist you on um, drawing the outlines. To get this point, you'll mark off one inch from that corner to that point. And this dot here is two inches from that corner. And this dot here is two inches from the bottom. And this one is one and a quarter inches from that corner. And this one here is 2.5 inches from the top. This dot here is exactly in the middle of this length. Remember that length is five inches, as you can see. So this dot here is 2.5 inches from this corner. Then you go ahead and draw your outlines. You join those corners. Now you have to make sure that this end here is a smooth curve. You can use your French curve or you can use freehand, but you have to try as much as you can to perfect that curve so that it's as smooth as possible. So once you've joined your points, the next thing is to cut out. Now remember here, you have to use a paper scissor. Don't cut paper with a fabric scissor. Otherwise, you'll end up destroying your fabric scissor. So you have to always make sure that you use a paper scissor. So once you've cut out your outlines very well, your pattern will look like that. So once you have your pattern, you'll move ahead and transfer that pattern onto the fabric. In this case, I'm using a blue fabric, but you can use any other color that you wish. But you always have to remember that the type of fabric we use for making a face mask is one that meets uh, the standards. For instance, the UNBS standards uh, require that this fabric has a very tight weave. You can use 100% cotton or you can use 65% cotton, 35% polyester. But don't use a knitted fabric. Knitted fabrics have big holes and can allow penetration of these viruses and dust particles. So you cut four pieces. You cut four pieces from the fabric. So you move to sewing. So you have cut your pieces and they look like that. You have two pieces of the outer fabric or two pieces that are going to form the outer piece and two pieces for the lining piece. So you've cut out this and they look like this. Now you have to always make sure that you cut them neatly. And in this case, you use a fabric scissor such that those edges are very smart. Otherwise, some people end up using black scissors and as they're cutting those edges, they look very uh, uneven. So you have to always make sure that uh, you have uh, very neatly cut pieces. So once you have uh, both of your pieces like that, then the next step is to stitch them together. So you will join each of those pieces onto each other. For instance, you'll get the two outer pieces together and make sure that the wrong side is on top. You can see it. The wrong side in Luganda is Vikukuju. The wrong side is what becomes the inside of that piece. So you have to make sure that the wrong side is on top. You join those two pieces together, the two outer pieces together, and you stitch along the curve like that, leaving a quarter inch allowance. So the allowance here is a quarter inch. So you stitch around the curve like that. You do the same thing for the lining. You get the two lining pieces. The lining pieces are the ones that are going to go on the inside of the mask. You get those two pieces. You 
put them together and make sure that uh, uh, they face wrong side. They are facing each other on the right side, such that on top you are seeing the wrong side. And you also stitch around the curvature like that, leaving a quarter inch allowance. So you will have your outcome like that. This is the inside part of the mask, and this is the outside part of the mask. Once you're done, for each of those pieces, you're going to cut notches around the curvature. This helps to reduce the bulk of the seam. Otherwise, if you don't cut those notches, the shape of the mask may not come out very well, especially when you turn it inside out. So you have to make sure that you cut these notches around that curvature like that. The next step, you cut two elastic pieces. Each of these elastic pieces is five inches long. Then you stitch it on the ends of one of those pieces from the right side. As you can see, this is the right side of one of those pieces. For example, you can choose the outer piece, turn it such that it is facing right sides, and stitch this elastic on the ends. Remember, the elastic is five inches long. Once you're done, you join these two pieces together from the wrong side. You're going to join the outer piece to the lining piece. Now you make sure that the elastics are inside. You get those elastics and put them inside. As you can see, the elastics are facing inside like that. They're facing in that direction and in that direction, such that by the time you put the other piece on top, you can't see the elastic. Then you stitch around the edge like that. But always remember to leave a tiny hole. You leave a tiny opening here for turning this mask inside out. Otherwise, if you stitch, if you stitch it all the way completely, you will not be able to turn it inside out. So as you stitch around the edge, you make sure that you leave this space here open. Now, through that opening, you turn this mask inside out such that it appears like that. Then the next thing, which is not showed here actually, is to top stitch. You have to make sure you top stitch. And as you top stitch, it will automatically cover the other opening you left. You top stitch your mask, and then you will have completed your mask. It's a very simple mask. It's not a 3D mask, uh, but it's still able to perform its functions. So this is the end. It's a very simple tutorial. It's not hard. And I'll be happy to see what you guys are able to come up with. Now, remember, when you go in your classroom, there is an attachment button. I have put an assignment there. The deadline is next week, Friday. You, there is a button there that says attach. Uh, as opposed to last time where you've been sending me as, uh, uh, your completed assignments to my email, this time around, you have to attach directly in the Google platform. When you go onto your assignment, you will see a button that says attach. You click it and you will be able to pick the right files or photos or a document or you've attached them on an A4 and you submit. So that is how it looks like. Now I'm going to open the floor for questions, but before I do, I want to pass on this communication. Opportunity Bank, in partnership with Motive, uh, they have launched a facility called Tools to Create. Through this facility, they will be able to dispatch uh, loans in form of tools. I'll be putting a, a, a form for you to register and I will forward this to the 
responsible person who will interact with you. Uh, this will start off with uh, a financial literacy training and then ultimately lead to uh, a dispatch of the loan. But they will be able to communicate to you the entire procedure of uh, 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 getting this loan. But priority is given to you who have gone through the academy. But of course, even other people have not gone through the academy, they'll be considered. But uh, for you, especially who have gone through the academy, uh, it will be such a great opportunity to apply for this facility. I'll be putting uh, the registration form, the link to the form in the both your classroom and on WhatsApp such that you can apply for this facility. Now, I would like to... I would like to uh, get some questions from you. I hope you have, uh, if you have, you can put it in the chat in the next, maybe let me say five minutes, we discuss a bit. We can also discuss a bit on your previous assignments and we can, uh, I can be able to help you on that as well. Yes, anybody with a question uh, regarding what we have learned today? Today, At what point do we take... Sorry, what was that? Oh, I've lost it. It's, it's right here. Uh, at what point do we take photos of the progress? Uh, I think it is important to take a photo at each step, perhaps, so that I gain insight on your process. Because uh, if the final product is not looking fine, if the final product is not looking fine, and I don't understand your whole process and how you uh, came up with it, then it may quite be difficult for me to uh, be able to trace and assist you on on a, on a particular step. So I would request that you take at least one photo for each process, you know, at least one photo for the drafting, one photo for cutting the fabric, and one for the stitching, and one for the, uh, for the final product. I'd remember there is also presentation. How do you present your product to your client? You've seen people selling masks on the roadside and they're just hanging them. That is not good. You have to always make sure that you buy proper packaging material. Uh, there are, <clears throat> you can access these packaging materials. Um, <clears throat> you can buy them from the shop, a simple polythene bags, and uh, you package your product very well and make it very presentable. And you can also maybe get some stickers which describe uh, how the product is to be used. Uh, by the client, uh, it will be good for good. It will be good to present this product in a very uh, professional way. And then I beg your pardon at the point of attaching the elastic straps. So to uh, the point of attaching the elastic straps. You cut the elastic pieces or the elastic straps five inches long. Each of these piece of each of these elastic pieces is five inches long. Then you stitch them onto the sides. You can use a hand needle as you can see, or you can use your sewing machine. Still be able to work. There are different types of elastics. Uh, these are the small elastics, which are rubber rubber three, but they're also a little bit larger size sizes called rubber five so you stitch them on the ends and then but you have to make sure that as you're stitching they are facing towards the center of the mask and secondly you have to stitch them from the right side of one of the pieces then once you're done you'll get the other piece and put it on top with the wrong side facing up, then you stitch around like that. But you always have to make sure that you leave an opening for turning this mask 
inside out such that your mask will look like that then you finally top stitch and this will automatically cover the opening you left and then your mask will be complete i hope i have answered you then another person is asking uh should the allowances include should the allowances included on the pattern or in this case they are not necessary in this case the allowances have been counteracted for otherwise if you add their extra allowances then the mask will look very very big uh when the, you put it on the face it will be very big you know and you don't you don't want to have something like that so the allowances are already there on the pattern dimensions uh, then bridget is asking I don't have a machine now. I'll do all the procedures and send to you if it's okay. Yes, if you are able to access some hand sewing tools like need like sewing needles and some even if even the fabric itself, if you have some old t-shirt at home, you can cut it and turn it into a mask. Some old fabric be able to turn it into a mask. But if you don't have a machine, it's still fine. You can use hand tools and try to stitch around. The concept will absolutely be the same. Because for me, the most important thing right now is to see that you are able to understand the concept. When the lockdown is lifted, you'll be able to come to Motive and finalize those projects. Now, remember, this is a certified class, despite the fact that there is Future Fashion Designers, which is also certified. Fash skill is also a certified class. You'll be able to get a certificate for this particular class as well. So it's always important that you actually at least do something and hand in these assignments for me to help you meet your challenges and assist in your learning process. Any other question, please? You can put them in the chat or you can just unmute yourself and let me take two more questions and we conclude. Yes. Any more questions? Should I should I conclude? Yeah, Atricia is saying what has become of future fashion designers? Yes. Uh, future fashion designers is ongoing uh, uh, and uh, it has its own enrollment. There are several people enrolled in future fashion designers. Of course, uh, future fashion designers is on is still ongoing. And once the lockdown is lifted, hopefully after the forty two days when we get back, all the other participants and those who were unable to access this online training, they will be able to recap following our original Future Fashion Designers program. And yes, but this particular program, the Fash Skill program, is an online open learning series. And along the way, we shall also have interaction with different guest, guests. We have a couple of guests that will be uh, joy, who, who will join us from around the world to discuss their fashion designers, they are experienced designers. They'll be able to join this fash skill as trainers. It's not just me and Nina. Uh, we shall still be putting the flyers out there so that you know who will be joining us for for the next uh, for the next class. But we shall have all, we shall be interacting with so many uh, people from around the world, from Europe. They'll be part of this fash skill. Like we are planning something uh, before this month ends. We shall have a couple of guests uh, from uh, Norway, and uh, it's 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 a, a class for you to interact and learn how to scale your business. Uh, it's not just about the technical competencies of making a mask, of doing uh, this and that, but also being able to run a fashion house. So it's still a broad program that will be of an added benefit for you. Unlike uh, the face-to-face -face tutorials where you only have access to your uh, direct trainers, this one you, we have access. It's a virtual platform where we ha we have access to so many other people from around the world and can be able to interact with us uh, on an online platform like this. 
uh, when is the class for Nina getting uploaded? Nina is finalizing her class on product development and fashion, I think, today. And this video will be up uh, probably tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow we are having another class to this. Uh, for this week, only have two segments. We have this one for making this mask, and the next segment will be on making necklines, drafting them, and yeah, we're not going to learn the stitching process, but just how to draft the various necklines. Yeah. So. so Hello. Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, last time you had asked. Last time you had told us that, that you're going to show us how to make the the mask smaller, like how to, to, to turn down the, the measurements so that we can make a smaller mask maybe for a kid. And you've not touched that bit today, so maybe you had forgotten. Okay. Uh, that is called pattern grading. Um, for this lecture, because I don't want to give so much information at the same time. I want you to first achieve this, first make this mask. Then probably uh, maybe towards the end of the week or maybe we can get a day just uh, casually, you know, and we can have a one-on-one -on -one Q, Q and S session. And then we can recap everything uh, after you have actually made the first, uh, the first prototype which is basic and uh, a similar a similar size then later on we can probably go into the grading part but we, we can definitely have that lecture as well yeah all right i have a concern yes please I have a concern. so tomorrow on thursdays i have a standing class with motive uh, products to i mean design to industry mm. and it's also at 10 Mm. So I was wondering, is there a way most of can sync their classes so that we do not overlap? Because now I'm trying, I'm figuring, I know that I can always see the class online after, so I can afford to miss it. But it would be nice to be present in real time. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. I understand. Uh, I'll communicate to the people are at motive and uh, we'll be able to put this in sync. I'll, I'll try my level best to communicate with them. Yeah. But of course, tomorrow it's, it's really on short notice because now tomorrow, this is already programmed for many. They know it's 10 AM. Maybe for future lectures, we'll try to put it in sync. All right. Uh, thank you very much to all of you for attending. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. If your friends out there have questions, if they were unable to make it to this class and they have questions, let them put it in the comment under the class. When you go to your class under each topic, there is a comment section. You can put your comments in there, put as many comments as you can, then we can all interact. You have to always make sure you... Um, log into your classroom because we always communicate things in there, update information, this and that. So for this particular study material, I am going to make sure that I change, I include the slides which I hadn't included so that you have a complete document. Now, thank you very much for attending. If you have any questions, always uh, put it in the comment section. See you tomorrow. But somebody's just a quick one is saying, should we retouch the assignments? Yes, when you go in, if you log into your classroom, you will be able to locate where uh, it says submit, you know, or something like attach. Then you'll be able to attach and submit through the Google Classroom. It becomes much more easy like that. All right, thank you very much. For any other questions, just put them on WhatsApp. Okay, see you tomorrow.